here we are <clears throat> pulling up to the Cuevas Classic. Gonna drop some birds off, hang out with Tony for a bit. First time being here in person, so I'm excited. All right, everybody, I'm Jeff Lamberton here with Tony Cuevas at the Cuevas Classic. Tony's gonna show us how he intakes the birds that come to the race that people send him, and then we'll do a tour of the loft and see the whole operation. Hi, right. thanks for coming, man. Thank you. So what I'm gonna show you real quick is gonna be on how is the procedure on when the birds come in. So we get them from the post office. Um, it's a little bit different here because what I usually do, I take every, the first shipment and the second shipment. And after the second shipment, I do the the vaccination and the chip and everything, but I will do it that now so y'all can see the whole process, okay? So these birds are from Williams and Son, right? Yeah, we tried David Williams' birds and mine. We're gonna do David's first, just in case something goes wrong, it happens to his birds, right? Yeah, just, just, just you know. So we take everything they have because they love to send us uh, these uh, plastic bands. Yeah. Money, you know, when you have money like that, you can do whatever you want, right? We just put the chip. We clip nine and ten. So this magic red drops. And we actually enter into Wing Companion, 420 West Wichita Falls, the color. And this one's pretty much done. This is what we do. So this is what we do. Wait, nine and 10, nine and 10. We put the chip. And then we continue with the second one. Twenty nine. The red stuff kills parasites. Yes, and it works. I uh, have tried all kinds of stuff, and it works. Within two three days, everything's gone. So every every single bird goes through the same procedure when they get here. This one is what twelve. Okay, so now that we actually done inputting all the birds, we just save the profile on Wing Companion. And there you can see the number, the color, the band. That's pretty much what you can see. One wing companion, that's how we enter. Now, since we got yours, let's see here. Yours are under Lumberton, right? First, okay. So we go here, we kind of click and. Mm -hmm. So we here, we just kind of find his name, hit enter. And a lot of people do it a different way. Some people just weigh and pull the flights. Other people weigh and cut the fly and wait two weeks and pull them out. I have tried all different ways. You know, it just depends which 
way you rather do. There's no a right and wrong way to do it. You just know whatever is easier for you. Um, 11.21 AU, right? Number 10. Sometimes I'm very good changing uh, from uh, AU to IF. I got everybody on a, uh, AU instead of IF. So we usually do it twice, hold the birds. This is what we're doing on the system. And then when we're done with all the birds, we actually grab them again and kind of synchronize the chip to the, to the number. And we uh, export it from Wing Companion to Pydex. And then we find the bird and we synchronize it with the chip. And then that's when we vaccinate them and we also do the the cover band put the cover band that way all the the regular band is covered and they all look the same you have one of those cover bands? yes we do and i always listen to people you know what they want to what they want to see what they when they say something i always listen you know what they really want to do what they want to see or and if it makes sense you know i'm always uh, i'm always trying to do something different something better Something that we'll have. Uh, so this goes over the bird's fan so you don't know whose bird is whose. Yes, and we do that as soon as we vaccinate them and and uh, put the chip band, like synchronize it, and we we're, we're gonna do the we're gonna do that in a minute. Eleven twenty. That's a good number, man. Eleven twenty-two is a good number. Blue bar, wi -Fi. So, but you cut in the flight, like I said, if people do, do, do it like in the middle of the summer, uh, they cut it and uh, wait two weeks, and they pull it out. The purpose of this is you want the, the flight to be dry right. and that way it won't hurt the bird and you don't have no problems when it's coming out again. Um, people actually do it where they just pull it. When you just pull it, you have more chances of, you know, something going wrong when they're coming out. So that's why I ra I'd rather cut it and it will dry it and we pull it out. Usually at a week before 4th of July is when we actually pull it out and by then it's very dry. You can just pretty much very, very easy. Uh, pull it right away cutting it, you risk it going back wrong. Wrong. Maybe not the right length or maybe not coming back right away. At all. At all. At all. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't come at all. Right. Come on, baby. All right. So now what we do is we just save all the birds. And what we do is we actually transfer all that information to Pydex. And okay, so the way we, we do it, for example, there's several other races that do it too. Since we have Wing, uh, wing Companion and Benson One Love Race, it's a little bit different. So we enter everything here on Wing Companion, and then we get the people from Benson to export it to Wing Companion, uh, export it from Wing Companion to Benson. Sometimes you, you, you will see the people that has those two systems. They usually, uh, at the beginning, they do less inventory because it's, it's kind of hard to get in and out than when you have Wing Companion. When you have Wing Companion, as soon as it's in, it's in, and you can do whatever you want. But since we have two different systems, you know, it's pretty much we have to make sure everything's synchronized. Uh, we used this one last year. And remember, in the final, I had a little glitch. Uh, it was here because we're trying to uh, – I'm testing. I think it's, I was the yeah, first one. Seems to be better. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. The only thing since, since uh, this one has – a docking station this one does not have a docking station so by use by using it we're trying to find any type of a mistake or anything where they can improve to make it work right. you know you have to have that so we figured out what the problem was so we actually for right now we're using this one but we're going to start using that one also um, so now that we have Pydex 
In Pydex, you know, it don't matter which one you use. Pydex is, is the same thing. You actually go and, and look for the pro profile where you have all the birds that you're bringing in from uh, Wing Companion, and then you import it. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we catch the birds again. And we'll read the band, 1089. So we'll do 1089. And some bands are similar, so always have to make sure it's the right one, especially when you have a lot of birds. So now the chip is synchronized to the bird. Perfect. So now what we do, Over here, forgetting trying to vaccinate me. So, you can vaccinate anywhere, um, there's no right or wrong place. I usually do it here. This is pretty much what we do with all the birds. Four twenty nine. Let me make it a little bigger so you probably have a better twenty nine. You always make sure because there's might be four twenty nines with different letters. See, like for example here, there's two 420s. The way you know is this one is already on the system, so this one doesn't have a chip ring yet, so that's the one. Also, you have to go based on the lettering, which is for WF and WF. You click on it. So after you put this cover on here, there ain't no way for you to tell. Whose bird is who? Yeah. And what we do is whenever it comes down to do the pull in the flight, we're going to be cutting the zip ties. And just double check and put, put some new ones in just to double check that, you know, the right. right. We always make mistakes. We're human, so we could make a mistake and put the wrong number, wrong letter or anything. And it's not so much hard work, but it's just the same thing over and over and over and over and over. So and sometimes you have to be concentrated on what you're doing because you can you know, miss a step and then you're in problem. You know, you might not put the chip or you don't vaccinate or something. Just So you always have to make sure you, you, uh, you pay attention on what you're doing. That way you don't miss a step. We actually... Vaccinating with the uh, rota. We have always trying to do something different, you know, because you get one and next year they don't have it. You have to come up with a new one. Uh, I really like the ones that had only uh, 
the ones with uh, PNB only. Uh, but you know, they're always discontinuing one and take another one. And right. So always trying to get a, a better one. So we had a really good recommendations on that one on the rotor. So we're going to try. And so far, I like what I've seen. So hopefully it stays, you know, that way. I usually like to do this at night. It's more relaxing. Birds already ate. They're very relaxed. And that's when I like to do it. last year uh, we had 18 about 1825 1830 that many times and there's some days where you get a bunch of them so you know you already know and and so it's kind of it's always good you know we get excited when we got those days for example this week i believe it's going to be a busy week I already got a lot. Yeah, I got a lot of people calling me. They're already sending the birds. I got people sending their bird trees. So you know, it's, it's excited that you you always want to have that support. You know, that's yeah, exactly. that reflects the type of job you did the year before. You know, and we've been here for what? This is our seven year, seven or eight, seven eight, but seven under Cuevas Classic. So we uh, we have our customers already, and we always get. We're always getting new ones, you know, new new right. breeders or people that have never tried the race before. Um, and we always hear, we're always happy to get some new ones, you know. And I think, I don't know for everybody, but for myself, um, this part, like the first four or five months, are the most critical ones. Is when you get in all type of germs, sickness right. and everything. So that's when you have to be very careful, alert on anything that you see kind of suspicious. That's when you actually have to be and make sure you you don't go corners or trying to do something fast or skip a, a, a skip a section or do do the same type of uh, same type of uh, process. That's the only way you're gonna find out. You know, you have well not find out, but half of the birds on the same pace, same pace. But medicating everything the same at least if there's a problem you kind of know where to start because you know what you what you have done but there's years man where there's just bad ones and there's some really good ones where you know no matter what you do everything goes pretty and then some of them no matter what you do goes ugly right but it's just part of the part of the job Oh, I want to give a shout out to Edo, Edo Family Love. He's the one that mentioned to me, hey, do you think you can do something like that? You know, um, he uh, recommended a tape last year and I tried it, but it was just, it was just, I didn't, you know, it was just different. Um, so I was doing a research and find these bands and I kind of like them and we're going to try and something we see we don't like, we're going to try something new next year. But he was the one. And like I tell everybody, hey, this is your race. If you have some type of opinion or something that you might think it will make us better, you can always call me and let me know. You know, like I said, if it makes sense, we can always do a, uh, uh, we can always improve. If, this is, if you're gonna say something to improve the race, hey, I'll be the first one trying to make a, a change. So what we're gonna do now, since we finished with all the pigeons, we're gonna export everything from Pydex. We're gonna save what we did. We're gonna save, yes, and we're replacing the old profile. We minimize. We go here and then we go import Pydex. Choose file. And 
Here's where you have to be very careful because if you choose the wrong file, you're going to blank every single bird that you just did, and then you're going to have to start all over. So you always have to make sure you get pick the right one. Upload file, upload bird list, and there you go. That's what you have in so far? Yes, 239. Mm -hmm. 239, that's mm -hmm. good. There's a lot more to come. Yes, yes. So now, what do we want to do? Let's look at the loft and okay. uh, get a tour. Let's this go. So here's this. Right now we're in section number two, and this is what these birds are actually going to go. They, they like their new place. So we we just started uh, the new this new section. So the ones that actually go there, they're out here. These will go. These there. new ones will add to this. Mm -hmm. Those are the birds from Saturday. All those birds were from Saturday. So what we do is, say for example, this is section here. So this is what we do. Uh, we give them maybe a day, and then we want to make sure they're very, very familiar with the whole area. So this one's here is easier because there's already some birds, a little, a uh, little bit older birds there. Not older, but been here for a while. So that you eventually just gonna be following. So you keep them here, you will let them explore this hallway so they can know there's in and out, kinda of know where home is. Don't overwhelm them, so close doors so they don't have too much space. Yeah. So they get to kind of explore a little bit, they have food and water we're ready for them, right? Mm -hmm. And then like the second day, we open the sliding door. So now they already explore the whole hall this hallway here. So now they get to experience the outside. Then they'll be with these. Mm -hmm. There's the view the birds have to home in to where they are. Beautiful, wide open. So that's kind of the procedure on how do we take birds. How many sections do we have here? We have 10. We actually have 10 sections. They're all the same. But here's where we start. Let me show you where we start with section number one. And the reason that is, is so we start here. This is section number one. We're actually done with this section here. Uh, it's already filled. We are doing uh, trap training on this one. So they already ate this morning. So they're actually at the Avery. And then they do it again. They come in. This one's already have medication, so they already started their uh, medication process. As soon as we we uh, fill up our section, we start. They all go through the same uh, treatment. Every single bird must go to the same treatment. Um, we start with this one, and then this one. This one will be number two. And the reason why we don't do this one is because if we do the third instead of the second one. And we can use the savory here. As soon as we filled up and we finish uh, with the process, then we just switch it there, and then we combine those two groups to one, and they can start going in and out. Uh, and this, you, how we just go every other, and then we just bring it one back, one back, one back. Uh, but pretty much, let me show you this section that is uh, empty. Is that 24? 24 by nine almost ten feet wide uh say feet tall 
very tall. Uh, we have 240 purchase on each section. Um, I don't like when there's purchase everywhere or they're too, too close together or on the section on the front. I like to walk and make sure that I see, you know, I have a good view and I don't have like purchase blocking my view. And then I think it looks neat, you know, I don't, you know, and there's nothing wrong, but this is what I like. There's some people that has purchase on this side and purchase on the other side. I just like the, to have a uniform and kind of have a, uh, kind of look good. It's like, I always, the way I see it is like, this is, this is me. This is represent me. This is my image, the image that represents Cuevas Classic. Uh, on training days, what we do is we use open those Avery's. We open every single Avery and we start pushing birds out. When you start pushing birds out and they just, you know, they just fly and we just push them out. That's when we actually training. As you can see, those are the birds in section one. Um, there we were uh, putting once. We did it once this morning for them to eat. And when they're finished eating, we push them out again. And later on, they go back in. So they can get a routine and a, a process. So they know, you know, what they need to do to go eat. Um, and eventually, here in the next, what, 10 days or so, we actually lift this and let them out. And they go out once. And after we're done, then the second group is going to be uh, taking turns. So every single bird is going to be doing the same thing. They usually about the whole day long, you know, one's in, another one out. It gets easier when you start having just one group. And then let me show you. When everything's easier is when it's uh, road training, when we get to that level. So when we get to that level, I'm not saying it is easy, but birds already know. Let me show you how we do things here. Well, you know what? Let me show you so, so I can show you probably people do the same thing or something similar. No, 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 no. So we always, you know, I used to, in my other law, at the beginning, you know, I usually had to walk the law off and turn the lights on. So now what I do is I have these Wi-Fi switches. So what I do is you can have them on a timer or you can just do them yourself. Everything around the house, I have this with the cameras and everything. So when my alarm goes actually go off, I uh, just get up and this, I turn the lights automatic from my phone. That way, by the time I get here, the birds already wake. They have already, you know, move around. Because before it was like, I would have to walk all the way here. I didn't do it here because I did this. But I would have to get here to my loft, turn it on, go back, wait for them to wake up, you know, kind of procedure. But now it's like you do it and you don't have to be like waiting. So by the time I get here, they're already awake. They're moving, they're around. So this is the first thing we do. And now let me show you the ramp. The ramp is at the end of the hallway. We always have the trailer the night before. We always have it already here. That plywood there, is, I don't have it. It's always clear. So just now, because that's when we do shipping. This ramp right here has a pulley. So it goes to a different level. If you see there, I don't know you can see it. So that's the levels of the trailer, first, second, third level. You know, I usually start with the highest level and then right. just go down um, to the last one. Uh, that's for the trailer and as you go you close one and then you go to the next one now the way that works here The way that we act the way it starts I close the first thing I do is I close all the sections All the sections And the first few days, is, is, it gets a little bit of a headache because the bird's trying to learn. But usually what we do even when we use low flying, we let them out through their, to the ramp. That way they have a, a, an idea. So we kind of what we do is just come here. We get them all out, start pushing them. And they start just coming here.
you push them in, load them up, come back. It's usually two sections per level. Same thing here where you they start coming down and and then you start walking them and then you start walking in the hallway and they start seeing the other birds and then you start going out. We have a light. There you start. So by that when I do these two sections, that means we close one level and then we lower the ramp to the second one. And then here, these ones are closed. Remember, this one is closed, okay? They're all closed. And then we start with this one. Get them all out. And that's how we do it. Every section. Mm -hmm. Well, last year we used uh, eight sections. Um, and this year we're probably going to use all ten. But eight sections, and like I said, it's, it usually, they usually stay where they started, like for example, your birds, I mean, maybe one or two, who knows, and they end up having a girlfriend or boyfriend somewhere else, they move. Right. But it gets to the point where everything turns to one big uh, section. Um, and they're, just, they're free to fly or go anywhere they want to go. This is a beautiful law. That main thing that I love of this bird, I mean, about the loft is the, the ins I mean, I insulated the roof, uh, the walls, and it keeps the heat out big time, especially because we're here all day. Right. In the middle of the summer, it keeps it very, very cool. And on the, on the summer, I mean, on the winter, when it's racing time, it gets very cold. We close all the windows, they got bottom doors, so there's no no uh, cold air yeah airflow and you know you want the airflow in the summer but you don't want no airflow on the on the winter that way it keeps everything and uh, and it keeps them informed you don't have to worry about you know how they come out of form because it's cold or anything i mean it is cold but it's not as cold as you know if you didn't have uh everything uh shut down yeah. and all these ideas with the time you know you start seeing what works for you what doesn't work for you you know yeah trial and error mm -hmm. continue yeah, because in my other loft, I didn't have uh, me this many things, so I had to like put some plastic to it just to cover it from the winter time. So my on my mind was, you know, next one, I would use these sliding doors. That way, you know, they uh, you have more open space, and on the, on the winter time, lock everything down, and there's no air coming in, and it keeps it very warm. Questions. So how long till uh, the process of being out in the net and from intake to being out in the net, when are they starting to be able to go out and learn the area? A little you, bit? I don't really have a uh, like a time period because you know every section might feel slower and you know, faster. You know as, as as we go, it's gonna get faster and faster. But I usually like to keep them three to four weeks uh, uh, on the net. Uh, as soon as you get the birds going, it's a little bit easier. So you get them, you know, you're just already birds out there and they're more uh, smart. The main ones are the first ones, you know, that's when the ones you want to make sure you just settle right and because that will be setting the tone. That will be setting the tone on the other birds. Uh, and we, like I said, we kept some of the older birds from last year just to make sure that some of them get in trouble, whatever. We can always let those go and bring the, the other ones. We're trying to do something different from last year. So trying to have uh, less losses if we can when we settle birds. Yeah, so we have some birds here on the end that we can show on the camera that are from last year that let out in the beginning process. The birds are out and trying to figure out their way back. They can kind of be Bring a beacon in. in the air. It's mm -hmm. similar where all the... Yes, uh, that's something that we did this year. We've never done it before, but since, because we all, we have always done it the 
we have always done the net. And this year we're getting away from the net. I really love the net, but we're getting away from the net this year and see how it works. That's why we're keeping those birds just in case, you know, they, because, you know, they might be end up on another house or whatever. And if they say a good amount of birds coming here or flying by, they were just going to follow and, and then they will come here. I mean, like I said, they have pretty good views, so they should know that this is home. So that's pretty much, you know what we're doing this year and see if it works. If not, we always try to adjust to make it better for everybody, for me, for y'all, for, for the birds. Let's get an outside view of it. Sure. Then, uh, what part you have oh, yeah, sure. See the bat fans there, how often do they get bats? On the summer, once or twice. Um, a week. Yes, a week. When it's racing, only once. And here's another thing: people do different things. But I do. But when racing season comes, I give the bath the day of shipping. It just works for me, and that's my belief. And that's you know, people say, "Well, no, that's affect the birds." I, I don't have any, I, I don't think they, they actually help them because the way that's when I actually see when the birds are ready after the bath. I see a big, big change on the birds. They're ready to go. They're happy, you know, shiny and everything. Uh, like I said, I tried different things and uh, before. The, yeah, I see in the day, two days before, after the race, and so far, I mean, this is what I have liked more, seeing uh, different. And it's just like you, you know, if you take a shower, you're going to feel fresh, ready to go, you know. After you ate, take a shower, you're ready to go. And that's, you know, we don't really know what the birds like or not, but, you know, we use common sense. Are you happy with the help of the birds so far that have been sent? Yes. I want to say thank you to all the breeders. Uh, they have sent the birds. Um, no issues yet. This is, what, our third week? And no issues yet. We have not uh, seen nothing bad yet. We have not removed any birds. We have not done anything. Um, so that's a good and thing. Just because I'm a pigeon fancier and I'm used to always watching for help, one thing I look for is their eyes. Are their eyes bright? Are they wide open? You know, when, when you're not feeling, when you look at someone who's not feeling good, they're kind of scrunched up and their eyes are squinty and you can just kind of tell. And, and all the thing, I noticed that. And, and, and another thing, and, um, I had a few birds that were a little bit, you know, babies. And you can see, like you were saying, the eyes, but that's because they need, they, they haven't found the water. So you kind of, you know, kind of dip them and you can see them right away. Uh, so we always keep a, a good eye on it. I have a helper uh, since last year. So we like to walk them in and out several times. So they very familiar, they don't stress. And then when there's something wrong with the pigeon, when you walk in those birds, you're gonna see them, you're gonna come right away. The way they're acting, they, everybody's running over them. So that's, that's the reason why we keep on in, in and out, in and out all the time. Uh, but like I said, thank you to all the breeders. They have done a better job. And as we work together, us as a one of managers and you as a breeders, when new things, new medication, what works, don't work. What works for me, you know, might not be something that works for another manager. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just about ha having health, uh, health, uh, healthy birds. Here's the finish line where you want your birds to be. Mm -hmm. And they have two options here, right? Yes. And it's, it's hard. Somebody mentioned to me, man, it's very easy the way they trap in your place. Um, it is easy when they learn, but trust me, it's, it's hard when you get them to train. To, 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 at the beginning of the summer, like on the summer, it's consistent to have, some, uh, have them going so they know what to do, how to do it. Uh, that's why I like to keep them consistent. So they, right. they know what's next, and I know what's next. You know, like they, they know after a bad, it's racing. After a long race, they're coming home, they eat, and they're relaxed. Um, right now, the birds are treated like babies. Um, the real work starts after the molting. I don't really push the birds. I don't really try to take them down the road. I let them be kids because they're that's what they are. They're babies, you know, so I let them play around in the grass. I let them fly, you know, just settle, make sure they're, this is safe, and they feel safe. Uh, make sure that the first thing when they feel like they're in danger, the only thing they can think of is come home, uh, you know. But this is this is crucial here.
Okay, so here's where we where everything takes place, where we do the shipping. Usually keep the trailer there. And we have another trailer that comes here with the baskets. Shut the doors down. Make sure there's no bird escape. And then we just, I mean, pretty pretty sure that everybody is aware with this, this view here. You know, this is usually where we keep it. This here, if you notice here on the, on the floor. So when people come and watch birds, because they usually come every week, they have to be on this square. So you cannot take your bird that way. You can, you, they have to be with this, uh, with this in here. And everybody just watching. We have a pool table where people, you know, kind of play around to have some fun um, while they wait for the birds, for, you know, when they wait to call their birds. Yes. And you're going to have TVs here? You're going to have TVs here, yes. Mm -hmm. And you actually, we have, uh, yes, you can watch results. There we're working on a pool kitchen, pool kitchen bar. We have a... Uh, our fridge here, you, every time, here's, here's the thing, every time you come here for a race, you have food, it's free. All you can drink, all you can eat free, no cost. That's a appreciation, like pretty much saying thank you. Uh, this is how we appreciate our breeders so they can come and have a hot meal, drinks or whatever. Uh, family, it's an environmental family. You know, my family is involved, my kids. So if you ever want to come, don't feel bad of bringing your kids. My wife, for example, in the final, we have tables. With things to do with kids because you know we when we go to races i mean our kids are sometimes they get bored because there's nothing to do so we always trying to do that so when people come you know they don't have that problem with their kids yeah um this here is not done 100 percent yet we're still working on it here's our bathrooms for the the men we still have to do the little walls and stuff yeah that way it's, you're not having a line you can yes you can Exactly, you can go three at a time. And uh, for the ladies, we also have it for the ladies to so make sure. We, what we're trying to do is want to make sure people are comfortable. Yeah. Awesome. Shout out to Jassy for uh, making these for us. Shout out, Jazzy. Yes. And this is pretty much, you know, where, where if you come, here's where will you be having fun. We have tables and food and drinks and and uh, appreciate that, you know, every local guys, the people local, they always come uh, every race. And, you know, that's, that's uh, it's a lot of stress, but at the same time, if I feel good that, you know, they want to be here. That's a good thing and, and make you better, want to make you better. And there's a lot of work, you know, scanning every bird, but, you know, I'm pretty sure you as a breeder, you, you like that, you know, you can see that you actually, your bird is on the race. You get to see them on Facebook. Uh, we were having a little bit of issues with the internet. We're trying to see if we can get another providers. There's not many providers here. So, you know, we not can't do really what we want to do with different type of uh, softwares. But, you know, we're trying to do our best or, and then what we can do. Because we nothing we can do. There's just... So if you want to watch the birds be scanned and to have total transparency on what's going on here in Quebec Classic, Tony on Facebook. Yes, uh, that's the one thing that I recommend. A lot of people um, that don't have Facebook, I say, hey, if you don't have Facebook, you're missing out on the main thing because Facebook, you know, we do videos, and especially now that we, there's not too much going on, but there's at least you get a video, see the birds. Uh, I try to do at least once every day to make sure you know what's happening. The reason I do that is before I was actually had a race, um, I like when people would not do it but you know i would want it to feel part of the race and i believe by doing the videos that's how you feel that you're part of the race you right. you're not here but you're here you see what's going on in training you know we always do it uh, i like it um some people like videos some people like live i try to switch around um the only problem with life and that what happened on my final two you know that you get to parts where you don't have too much signal um, before it was all videos and people were like, Hey, can you do live? We try to do it last year, live on the races. And it kind of, you know, it works on some areas on some areas don't work. And we always trying to do different things. You know, what people want, that's kind of what we're trying to do. Tell the people, uh, how many races are you doing with your series? That are in okay. So there's, uh, four races and the activation is five. Uh, so it's 125. 
it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of different the way that we had it before. Before it was like 150, 200. But what I did is actually I took the uh, camp course uh, station, kind of station, not specific, the same point, but the same towns. Because, you know, they've been there. They've, they've done that for years. You don't want to go and try to find a new spot. It might be a bad spot. So I was a little bit worried this year. Not so much because I know the concourse done it before. So I kind of follow those uh, uh, cities and then they work right. But we have four races. We have activation at 125, 125 miles. That's your activation. 175, 265, 275. Uh, and the, I think it's like three, five, so there's five races, uh, four races and activation five. We have the additional one, there's 411. That's a good one. The thing, that one is a little bit, uh, I find out this year that it was a little bit of stress. Since we fly from the west now, we have a less hour, one hour less of sunlight. So if we're not careful, we can run into a problem where we don't get no daybirds. Right, right. <laughs> this past year, it was, uh, it was uh, exciting now that I'm saying it and then it happened. But that day was very stressful because it was getting very dark. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to get birds or not. But it was very exciting seeing um, 10 coming in. And then there's three coming right behind them. Uh, but it was very exciting. I think we ended up getting like 29 or 39 or something like that on, on the day with a less, a very, very uh, uh, small window for them to come, you know. But luckily, we, we were able to get that many birds uh, on the day, but you know, we're gonna to try to work on it. Um, our 400s here at the Cuevas Classic always been good, even from the from the from the east, usually 12, maybe low 13, but you're always on the 1200s. That's what people wants to see. The final was like, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 1340 or 1350. Um, uh, we only have one, one fast race, uh, which we find out here that it was not good for the birds. I don't know if because there's not that many landmarks that the birds actually just pass, pass me and come back. They, I had a, a 1700, I think, and it was pretty slow the way the birds come in, but we end up, on the end of the day, we end up getting a lot of birds back. So we didn't, it looked like we were gonna have a tough day, but we ended up being really good. So that means the birds were, were not, were, they were healthy and they were not what they were, uh, what they are uh, and how to come home. So that was a good experience for them but we're going to try to get away from those fast races. I think that's what people want. Uh, 15, maybe low 16s. It's hard to have a, a slow race nowadays too because everybody getting better birds, faster, better birds. Uh, we think as a, as a manager, uh, I hope we're getting better every year, you know, better, better and better. Like I said, this new course is going to be our second year. I'm going to do a little things different so we can get even better. When I was flying from the from the east, it was it was it, you already know what to expect from the weather, you know what to expect from the birds. But from the west, first year, I like it, and we're just going to continue to improve to get better races and people enjoy better. Thank you for showing us around. Vamanos. Vamanos.